Hi guys, so we're looking at um, some more of the properties of gases calculations and stuff geometry and also 2007 question 10b is the one we're going to specifically focus on for today's lesson. So you're told that carbon dioxide is stored under pressure in liquid um, form in a fire extinguisher. Okay, 2 kgs of carbon dioxide released into the air as you discharge from the fire extinguisher. You're asked for the volume there with a uh, so pressure and temperature. Now, we're given pressure and temperature with it, okay? Um, you're not mentioned anything about room temperature and pressure. You're not, there's nothing mentioned about um, about STP. So there's only other, one other form that we could use, and that's your PV equals NOT, your ideal gas equation. And more specifically now, we're gonna manipulate that to be V equals NRT over P. Okay. So we have to have everything in this one here to figure out um, what we're dealing with. Okay, so I'm going to just do a little side over here, just like so. And if I do all of that out, okay, it would be my volume equals N is my number of moles. So I actually don't know what that is yet. I will just leave N like that. My OR, it will be 8.3, which is given to you in your um, log tables. It's also on the front page of your exam. And your temperature, temperature has to be in Kelvin for this. Okay, and you're told over here it is 290 Kelvin, so that's fine. And that all goes over to pressure, and pressure has to go in Pascals, which it already is. So we don't need to do any conversions here. 0 0.01 times 10 power 5. Now we have to figure out what the number of moles is. Um, and this isn't always easy, but we are given the mass of this, okay, in terms of kgs. So number of moles equals the mass over the MR. Now, we're dealing with carbon dioxide, so the MOR of carbon dioxide, if you add them all up, that's one carbon and two oxygens, it could be equal to 44. Now, this is the hard part in terms of um, the mass. A lot of students did two, like so. Okay, two divided by 44 and whatever they got. But the mass must be in grams. That's really, really important. Okay, the mass that we were given was in kgs. Okay, so we had to convert that into grams. So 2 kgs is equal to 2,000 grams. So therefore, it was 2,000 grams. Divide that by 44. And you want to get 45.45. So 45.5, shall we say. Moles of CO2. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug that into the formula over here and get my answer. So I'm going to do that now. My volume equals 45.5 times 8.3 times 290 all over 1.01 times 10 to, power 10 to the power of 5. I recommend when doing this, take it step by step. So I'm going to do the top line first. That way you're less likely to make a mistake. And if I multiply that out, I will get a ridiculously large number. So 1094.09.09. And I want to divide that by 1.01 times 10 to the power of 5. So I'm going to put that into brackets when you divide it, by the way. So divide it, bracket, 1.01 times 10, and then do your y x to the power of 5. Close the bracket. Okay, and you're going to be dealing with at the very end of it there now. It's going to be 1.08. So my volume equals 1.08. Okay, and obviously we there now we can um we can leave it at but if we're being really really precise in terms of units, volume must be in meters cubed. Okay, so 1.08 meters cubed is our answer for that. So just it wasn't an overall difficult one. Um, once you realise that you use the PV equals NRT, and generally you do, as soon as you're given the um, the temperature and pressure, uh, you should be assuming that you're going to be using PV equals NRT. Uh, you just have to be cute and realise that you're dealing with 2 kgs and that the number of moles formula is not for kgs, but actually for grams. It's an easy conversion, but it's also an easy mistake. So just be careful about that. Now, the next part of this is what mass of helium gas would be um, occupied the same volume at the same temperature and pressure. Okay, 
So I'm just going to do that one out over here altogether. So we're looking for the um, the mass. So let's put it into our formula there. Your mass equals the number of moles times m r. Okay, so that's grand. If you go to your um, if you go to your periodic table for helium, okay, the m r for helium is four. Okay, so we put in our four over here. Now we have to figure out what is our number of moles. Now you're told in the question that um, our mass would occupy the same volume at the same temperature. Okay, so if it's the same volume and the same temperature, we can assume the moles are going to be the same. So all I'm going to do here is put in my number of moles and that's going to be my 45.5. So 45.5 times 4, okay, and that's going to be, our mass is going to be 182 um, grams. Okay, it didn't ask you to put it in kgs or anything like that, um, so we can leave it like that. Okay, 182 grams. So that's the answer in the second part of it there, but mass of helium gas would occupy the same volume there. So look, I hope you took something from it, guys. Um, not the easiest of them. Um, in terms of there are some easy mistakes that could be made, but wasn't the trickiest either. Okay, best of luck guys.